your quilt top pattern design and the quilting that you do on your quilt does not have to be the only way you add some design features to your quilt. So today we're going to be talking about binding a quilt. I spent the last few days whew, binding six of my quilts and not one of them have the same binding design on it. So today I'm going to show you the different ways you can bind a quilt. And I'll tell you, I do not enjoy binding quilts at all. I finished this quilt over a year ago and I just now got to binding it. And I think my hesitation on binding and the reason I don't really enjoy it all that much is because I always felt like there wasn't really a fun way to attach a binding. It kind of is just the finishing of the quilt and that's it, you know? There, oftentimes I would just use the same color or um, fabric as the border or the backing of the quilt and there just wasn't a lot of pizzazz to it. So five of my quilts here that I'm going to show you have a little bit more pizzazz to it than just a regular binding. So how I normally would bind a quilt is like I said, I would find a fabric that was somewhere on my quilt, usually the border or the back, and I would cut two and a half inches, two and a half inch strips, sew them all together end to end, fold it in half, iron it, and attach it to the back of the quilt, then flip it to the front and top stitch it in place. And that's not a bad way to bind a quilt at all. And it makes it, you know, pretty simple. But let's dive in and take a look at some of the other ways that I bound some of these quilts. All right, so let's take a look at all of these different bindings. So first back here, I have a binding where I attached it just like I normally would, but I added some stitching, hand stitching through here to add a little bit more color. And then this binding is scrappy. So I added some pieces together that are throughout the quilt and attach on. This is really twofold. One, it is a fun binding because it isn't just the same fabric throughout the entire binding, but also it could save you a little bit of money because you are just using scraps left over from your quilt. So you didn't have to buy a whole separate piece of fabric just for the binding. Now on this one, this is probably my favorite. I added a little bit of lace here to add a scalloped edge. So I have just a typical binding that I would have would have normally done that just matched my border. But then I added this little bit of extra framing through here with some lace. I absolutely love how this one turned out. All right, and so then here I did a flange binding. So you can see a little bit of another color peeking out here. And it's kind of like a faux piping look to it. And I absolutely love how it turned out because it adds just a touch more interest to your quilt. And then here on this last one that I'm going to show you, I combined two of the different bindings that I did here. So I combined the scrappy and the flange binding to do a scrappy flange binding. And I really love how this little black area here, that kind of faux piping, really helps frame the quilt. I love how this turned out. And I think this is also a great way, if you look at this, to jump into a scrappy binding because the faux piping here, this black frame really helps unify the binding. And then having these very, very light, very similar color strips of fabric, kind of, it looks like it is the same throughout, but when you get closer, it kind of adds a little more interest because you're like, oh, that is not all the same fabric. Like this one has little X's. This is, you know, some of the, the prints throughout here. I mean, it really, when you get close, you can really tell 
that it is different, but from afar, it just looks like a traditional binding. I love how this one turned out. So I'll kind of go in a little bit more detail for you on how I did each of these bindings. I will put in the description of this video links to each one. So if there's one in particular, you would like to see more details on how I assembled it, you can go ahead and jump to it. But I would like to hear in the comments if you've already done any of these bindings or if one's kind of inspired you to try it, which one you like best, I'd love to hear from you. All right, so let me jump in and start showing you how to do some of these bindings. All right, so for this binding, I'm gonna be using this beautiful green plaid fabric and I'm gonna be putting it on this cute little bird wall hanging. So to start this project, I'm going to be attaching the binding just to the back of the wall hanging first. So I'm just going to sew it right along the edge, right um, with raw edges together and finish it off. And then when I'm going to, when I bring the binding to the front of the quilt, I'll be showing you some fun hand stitching that you can put on your binding just to add a little bit of extra fun to your project. Okay. So here, is how my stitches look. I chose a contrasting thread. So at first I was gonna go with a cream thread or a green thread. And then I thought going with another color right might really add some interest to it. You can see I'm not doing perfect stitches. I'm not great at hand stitching, but practice will make me better. And I kind of like the way it looks. This is a scrappy little wall hanging and having the stitches be uneven, not perfect. I just went with it. So be it, right? I feel like crafting, sewing, quilting, all that is supposed to be fun. So you see, I can, I still have a little bit more here to do. I think what is fun about hand stitching a border is you don't have to do like little straight stitches like I did. You could do um, X's, you could do like a zigzag. There's a lot of different things you could do here to add some fun. I just kept it simple since I have a nice little pattern already on this border. So here's what I've been doing. I, don't, I think it's called an embroidery knot. So I just kind of held the end of the thread between my needle, the, my needle and my finger and wrapped the thread around a few times and then pulled the needle through. And you want to kind of hold it taut until you pull everything through and then it gives you a little knot. So where I'm going to start my next stitch, and this is, might be a little hard to show you because I'm used to just kind of sitting with it in my lap, but showing it under the cam camera is going to be a little harder. So I go through the just the binding to get started. Um, you could grab a little bit of the top layer of the quilt the if you wanted to but I just go make sure I'm getting the binding so that I can hide this knot and everything and I just push whatever's left of the the string under I'll just tuck it under there and of course it's going to be complicated while on camera even though I never had a problem with it before let me put this clip back on to hold that that corner. So you, you see, I have it coming out here. Now, what I do is grab, and I'm, I've been trying just to grab the top part of the quilt, maybe a little bit of batting if I can, and then go up kind of as even as I can get these apart, these stitches apart through the next spot. So I'm going in kind of trying to get directly under where my stitch came out and then going up across just a little bit away to get my stitches and then just pull it through. So doing it this way, you can see I, I and there's some spots where I accidentally grabbed some of the backing. Thankfully, this is a wall hanging, so I didn't fix any of them, but for the most part, none of it showed on the other side. And if I keep practicing this, I think it would make a really nice added touch onto some of my quilts that I do in the future. I really struggle with top stitching my binding on really even because usually I machine stitch it to the back, top stitch it to the front. 
sitting and doing something like this, I think would be really relaxing and it could add a lot of fun to a quilt. And right now in the summer in Texas, it is so hot. I don't want to sit and hand stitch a quilt that is really big and have it sitting on me. But I think in the winter, that'd be something really relaxing to sit and do. So let me get this lined up a little bit better. Okay, so what I've been doing here, when I get to where that mitered corner is, I've been going in and up, grabbing the angled part of the mitered corner. So I'm going in just directly under my last stitch and I'm catching the top of that mitered corner. And then what I did is I come back down at the point of the mitered corner and come back up again at that same spot because I'm going a little bit above it, but it'll appear like I'm at the same spot just because I want to catch that corner really well. Then I come back down right in the corner and catch the top part of the quilt again and come up over like kind of that equal distance away. And then I'll go back through with my stitches again. There's so many ways that you could do this and there's a bunch of different tutorials on YouTube that are really good on different ideas on how you could do hand stitched borders with little designs to make it nice and fun. But this is how I'm doing it on this little quilt and I'm really loving the little bit of interest that it adds to it. And there you go. So I'm just going to go all the way to the end and tie off and then I'll be finished up with another quilt. So another binding method that I'd like to show you is using a scrappy binding. So when I sewed this beautiful churn dash quilt together, this is a project that I received from the open gate quilt box. I had some extra fabric left over. Some of it was intentionally for the binding and then some of it was just some other pieces from the project. And I thought, hey, why not make this scrappy? I could have done the whole binding in just this fabric here, which would have been amazing. It would have put it pulled in from the project. But, you know, I was, I was thinking I'd try something different. So I did the binding the same way I typically would. I, so I like to cut my binding to 2.5 inches. So I cut my strips to that size and then I just broke them into random segments. None of them are the same size and sewed them all together. I pressed all the seams open to help eliminate some bulk. And then I typically will sew my binding to the back of the quilt with raw edges touching. I sew it on and then I flip it to the front and do a top stitch. So I flip it to the front and top stitch it in place. So I'm gonna get this binding attached and then I'll let you see the quilt after. All right, so here is another fun way that you can add a little bit of extra fun when you're binding your quilt. So I have a binding here and you can see I chose a binding that is the exact same fabric as my border here. Now the backing is a little bit different, but what I'm going to do here is add a little bit of lace peeking out along where the binding will be. So my lace here is a half an inch wide. So the plan is, is just the scallop edge here is going to be sticking out on the, along the edge. What so I'm how I'm going to get this binding in place is I'm going to sew the binding to the back of the quilt first, and I'm going to go all the way around and get it sewn in place. After I sew it in place, I'm going to be putting the lace in place. Now I'm not going to have the binding flipped over to the front yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from one side of the quilt to the other and trim the lace and pin it in place. 
after I've trimmed and cut one side, I'll be able to lay the lace going along the other side, trim it at the end, and pin it in place along that side. So I'll have the lace trimmed and bordered around all sides. After I do that, I can sew the binding in place to the front. So I can flip it around, and then I should just have a little bit of the scalloped edge peeking out. I think it'll really frame the quilt nicely because I have so much cream throughout the main part of the quilt. I think having the little frame of scalloped edge will look amazing on this quilt. So I'm gonna get it all sewed up and I'll show you how it looks after. All right, so for the flange binding on the scrappy Americana quilt that I have, I cut this red bandana fabric to one and three quarters of an inch and the blue to one and a half inches. And then what I'm going to do is sew them right sides together lengthwise, press it and fold it in half just like it were um, a regular binding that I would be using. So the faux piping on this flange binding is going to be the red peeking out and then we're going to be seeing more of the blue fabric on the binding. So I'll show you what this binding looks like after it's all prepped. All right, so here is how the binding looks all finished. Isn't that gorgeous? You can see just the red will just peek out just a tiny bit on the quilt and add a fun little extra bit of interest to the binding. So here's the quilt that this binding is going to get attached to. And what I'll be doing is sewing the binding onto the back of the quilt. And you can see that I'm having the side where you don't see that flange binding. I'm going to be sewing it facing down to the backing of this quilt so that when I flip it around to the other side and sew it in place, you'll be able to see that little bit of faux piping. So first I'm gonna sew the binding onto the back of the quilt and then flip it around to the front. And I'm going to try to sew right along the seam here to hold it in place. We'll see how well I do, but either way, it'll look amazing. All right, for my combo binding, I'm going to be making a scrappy flange binding. So to do that, I cut the black fabric here to one and three quarters of an inch and the scrappy piece here to one and a half inch. So for the scrappy, all I did was sew little sections of different pieces from the quilt that I made and from different scrap creams and grays that I had. Now, I do wanna to note to you that I did press all my seams open because since I have these scrappy sections and I also had to piece my black piece of binding together, I wanted to try to eliminate any extra bulk that I may have by pressing the seams to one side. So with right sides together, I'm just gonna sew this, these two pieces together lengthwise, and then I will fold it in half and iron it just like I would a typical binding. All right, so here is the scrappy flange binding all prepped. It looks so good. I cannot wait to see it on the quilt. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I really had fun putting all these different bindings together and giving them a try. And I've really hoped that I inspired you to try some different bindings on your quilts. I will definitely be doing that lace binding some more on my quilts. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.